I'm not your tutor, obviously, you've got Kirsty. Uh, but I'm David, I'm from the Mass Learning Centre, and I'm actually running the first part of your tutorial today. And the first thing we're doing is having a look at this thing, uh, which says how many, there's a picture there. And what I want you to do is pick something that you can say how many about, um, and come up here and write the number on the board. So there's a whiteboard marker here that you can use and write the number on the board. So pick something that you can count, count it and put the number on the board, just the number. Feel free to, and please do talk amongst your groups. Just write the number. Oh, they do. Did you want me to move the board over there? Or? No, no, because I've, I've got a plan. Oh, okay. I'm going to. No. Beautiful. That's a very cool T-shirt. Okay. Any others you want to last additions? Well, there's got to be some more numbers in here. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll do that unless you're coming. No. Nope. All right. So um, I'm going to ask some people. Um, to tell me what their numbers are. So someone who has said, said 16, can you tell me what that is, please? Cups? Okay. Uh, what is this 17,166? Likes. Uh, which brings me to the point that this is an Instagram picture. Um, and if you go and have a look at this guy's Instagram, it's really cool. It's mainly photos of food arranged interestingly, um, if you want to go and look at it. Uh, who said this eight? What is eight? Slices. Slices. How do you get that? <laughs> Could you be more specific? <laughs> oh, okay, so those two together to make one and yeah. that with that to make one and then you count it eight that way. Cool. Um, who said this one? What's that? One square. One square. Well, that's interesting because I think there's three squares. <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah, yeah so there's, uh, if you could, if you wanted to, um, find all sorts of squares in here if you wanted. Okay, someone who said the 32, what's that? All the blank spaces as far as the cups. 32 quarters that weren't filled. 32 quarters that weren't filled. So like one, two, three there, and two there and one there. Cool. And someone who put the zero, what were you thinking? 
oranges. There are also zero squids um, or cats if you really wanted to go that way. Okay, this is the very first um, activity which is going to tell you uh, how we do things, uh, going to do things in this uh, first half of the tutorial. So this tutorial, ha this has a moral which is that you have to know what a number measures or counts for it to be meaningful. Until some of those, if you didn't count it yourself, until someone told you what it was, you didn't know what it was. And that may seem pretty silly, but that's the theme of this tutorial. We're going to do some things that are pretty silly and we're going to apply them to serious things later in your course. For example, in the UNICEF um, Education Inequity Report, um, that when it came out in November last year, there's all these things about reading ability for kids, and the reading ability graphs have a scale from 30 to 70, and until you know how reading ability is measured, those numbers are meaningless. If you're going to look at um, some information that you might use to make an argument, uh, that has numbers in it, you need to know what those numbers measure carefully and so that you can interpret what it means. And that's the basic theme of this tutorial. The whole tutorial is about, not that idea, but about how context is what gives meaning to number. Uh, and I'm going to keep coming back to that as we go along and we're going to get more and more detailed about how we're going to consider that as we go. So now we have uh, this number, 100 people, and what I would like you to do, well, just a second. So I know what it's counting, 100 people, it's 100 people, uh, but I don't know how big this number is. I mean, I know how big 100 is, but I don't know if 100 is a big number. Because if I someone asked someone to count how many people there were somewhere, and they gave me an answer of 100 people, sometimes I would go, wow, that's big. And sometimes if I asked someone to count, count people and they said there's a hundred, I would say, oh, that's, that's not very many at all. And sometimes I'd say, oh yeah, that's what I would be expecting. So what I'd like you to discuss in your groups uh, is if you saw a hundred people, I want you to discuss when it would be big, when it would be small, and when it would be somewhere in the middle. It would be really cool if you could think of a situation where a hundred people is a possible answer and when it would be big, small, or in the middle. So discuss please, and I will take... Um, responses from each of the groups in a minute. I've heard some really good answers, um, and so by saying I've heard some really good answers, that means you can be brave to share them, please. And so I'm going to switch over to here. Um, oh, yep, that's working. Okay. So, 
All right, I'm going to go around the groups. This first group, could you tell me when 100 people might seem big? Yep. Oh, give me one for small then. In a sports stadium. Sports stadium. So the players might feel a bit, a bit sad that there's only 100 people there. Depends on the sport, I suppose. But I guess compared to the size of the stadium, it's always going to be small. What about at the back there? Give me one for the other two. Yep. Yep, so at a party at your house. That'd be always the always the answer on Family Feud. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the middle back there, got any one of them? Hundred people on a bus would be big. Right, middle front here. What are you going to say for one of these other ones, small or middle? Yeah, a royal wedding, a hundred people would be small. <laughs> oh crap, you're right. Do you know why I got confused? Because they're in the wrong order. So big, middle, small, that's, what I, yeah, that's my fault. And this last table over here, one for any of these. Uh, in the middle, international flight. International flight. You guys had a good big one for one where 100 would be big. They said an elevator. And I said, I said um, is that possible? And we decided it would be possible if you stacked them this way. <laughs> okay, so you get how this game works. And we'll do the moral of this game in a minute, but in order for me to set up the next activity, I'm going to get you to do this again, uh, but for two other numbers. So for two kilos, two kilograms, and for five hours, could you please discuss this same concept, please? You're all going to need one of them for the next activity. So take one each. You're all going to need one of them for the next activity. You're all going to need one of them for the next activity. Oh, you're a big group. You're all going to need one of these for the next activity, so you take one each. You're all going to need one of these for the next activity. And what's the date of debate? Is it a chicken palmer or a chicken palmer? Palmer. 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 So I'm, I'm seeing like a song, like a dance song made out of this. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you an answer either. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, tell me, I'm not going to go around the groups, I'm just going to get you to call things out. Um, give me one. Um, when is two kilos big, small or in the middle? A recipe. A recipe, a recipe requiring two kilos of anything sounds like a big amount. Yep. Weight of, a Weight of what? A Gerbil. Yeah, a bit like a hamster. Um, yes, that would be an extremely large gerbil. Or a guinea pig. Guinea pig. <laughs> Though I reckon not impossible. Some of the ones I've seen at the Adelaide show are pretty huge. Yeah. <laughs> even, even two kilos is a pretty fat rabbit. Yeah. All right, so could someone volunteer a time when two kilos would seem small? A baby. Yep. <laughs> a baby. Well, this, is, this is interesting because we had this discussion. We had this discussion in the other two. It's a baby... It's about the right zone for a baby, but we actually Googled it and looked it up and babies are on average 
most of the time between two and a half kilos and four and a half kilos. And so two kilos is small for a baby, but not impossible. Um, when is two kilos just somewhere in the middle? And leg hand. <laughs> Beautiful. What about some of your favorite answers for five hours? Big for a movie. Big for a movie. Five hours is indeed big for a movie. Though not impossible. Big for a run. Big for a run. Yep. Someone said small for and I didn't hear the end. Small for a flight. Small for a flight. Yep. Did it again, didn't I? Okay. It's small for a flight. Does anyone have an answer to this that they think is particularly good by some metric of goodness? Oh, well, all this week, um, yeah. A shift? That would be a big shift. Yep. Uh, for teaching in the Maths Learning Center, it's pretty long because we're only open for six hours a day. <laughs> okay. Cool. I should tell you that um, for the two kilos, uh, well, actually for five hours, um, several other tutorials have said five hours would be long um, to be in a tutorial. <laughs> um, though you should note that over in the chemistry degree, you do five-hour labs. Um, uh, and two kilos, a lot of people have said two kilos would be about right for the amount of cocaine that was reported in the newspaper. <laughs> it might not be a, a, a big amount or a small amount for, might not be a small, might not be big or small depending on whether you're a dealer or a, or a user, I suppose. Okay, so you get the idea of this game, but now we need a moral from this. And the moral is that numbers are only meaningful by comparison. No number means anything, whether it's big or small, unless it's compared to what it usually is. And for the babies, we actually had to look that up to know whether it, two kilos seemed big or small. Uh, and that's true of all things. Now, in the report from UNICEF, it said that 90% of kids in Australia go to preschool, and that's a good thing because preschool is a strong predictor of whether you complete high school. And 90% seems like a big number, but it's really a small number relative to other countries of a similar wealth to Australia. And when you put those countries together, we're 35th on the list. So 90% of going to preschool is really actually small compared to the other options. You can't know how to interpret any number reported anywhere unless you know what it could have been. And that's a useful thing to think about uh, when you're trying to interpret information that you might use to make an argument in, say, a uni assignment. Um, there is this resource here called, is that a big number? Uh, if you see a big number reported somewhere and you want to know how big it is, uh, the is that a big number website uh, will allow you to put a number in and it will compare it to various other things. So I can put in something like 500 kilograms and it will tell me it's smaller than the mass of a mature thoroughbred racehorse uh, and it's bigger than the mass of a concert grand piano that's about the size of that um, number, and it'll tell me how it is compared to all sorts of other big numbers. So, for example, it's a 400th of the mass of the Statue of Liberty, which tells you how big the Statue of Liberty really is. So, um, this is useful because you might be able to put in some information about, say, countries, uh, and it will compare that information about countries um, across various countries and within a country this is uh, the United Kingdom that it automatically does, but we can put in Australia and it says populations and land area and land use and all of this statistics about countries um, as a, place, a first place to go. If you wanted to check these, you'd need to go to an official um, government website, but you could get the basic information here. Okay. So now we're moving on to the next activity and you all have a card like this. Um, and these creatures are called... Squeetles, uh, and they have, you, this card shows what your squeetle looks like, and not all squeetles look the same. 
and your card also shows a, a centimeter, measure number in centimeters, that's how high your squeakel is capable of jumping. Uh, and it also has a little number in the top left corner, that's there so I can make sure I get all my cards back. And it's also there uh, because I'm going to use it to put you into different groups than you are currently in. Um, I'm going to combine the groups together. So um, could I please have um, all the squeedles from 1 to 12 in that top left corner can please join this table? So everyone from 1 to 12, can you come to this table? So that's not your jumping height, that's the left hand number in the corner. Um, and from 13 to 24 can come to this table, maybe 25, 13 to 25, and everyone 26 and above can come to this table. Feel free to bring your chairs. What I'd like you to do is compare your squiddles to each other, please. Did you not get a card? Okay. So you're number four, so you're staying okay. at this table. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can come around this side. Beautiful. Okay. So what I want you to do is um, this. There's two pieces of information essentially about your squeetle. Um, I want you at the moment to focus just on that jumping height. You're going to ignore what your squeetle looks like and just focus on the jumping height. And what I want you to do is in your group to choose one squeetle from among your big group who you think best represents the whole group's jumping height. So I'm not wanting you to judge whether a jumping height is better or worse if it's higher or lower. I want you to choose someone who you think is representative of the whole group. That's yours. You're going to join that last group over there. <laughs> yeah, but that's the next level. I'm going to get you all to see if you can match the jumping up. No, not really. <laughs> okay, it looks like everyone... Okay, it looks like everyone has chosen their representative. Could the representatives please come out here? <laughs> All right. So, representatives, could you please tell everyone what your um, jumping heights are? Uh, yep. 126. Yep. 106, 82, I might move this over a bit then. Okay, could you line up next to your number please? Okay, so based on what you see everybody, could you please tell me what you notice about these groups. So based on the representatives, what could you say about the groups? They're sorry? Are they even? They're even. They look evenly spaced. That's a nice phrase. You need the space for it to make sense. See how I looked at I blocked out your faces there. <laughs> Okay, so, um, and what else could you say? They're evenly spaced, I like that. They're not in the middle of the scale, so this goes to 50 to 200, and the last one is about 120-something-ish. 
Um, okay, that's, that's beautiful. I like that's very good noticing. I've got an even more basic noticing than that. It seems that this group seems to be higher jumpers in some sort of general way than this group, based on the numbers that we've gotten from their representatives. Can I please ask, uh, what's your name? Uh, Jessica. Jessica, could you tell me how you were chosen? Uh, we added all of our numbers together and then divided by the, how many in our group. So we added them all and divided by how many in the group. Okay. Uh, how were you chosen? Uh, we found the median, so we, swapped, we lined them all up in order, and then went like that until we went to the middle one. All right, so you lined them all up, all up in order, and you found the one in the middle. And you called that the median. That's good. Yours is, most people call it the average, but mathematicians call it the, the mean. And how did you do it? Oh, we did the same as the first one. You did the same, so you did the mean? Yeah, so they're both perfectly legitimate ways of picking a middle. And actually, they have different properties mathematically, um, and so we choose them in different situations, depending on um, what we want, to, the kind of data we're looking at. Uh, and I think Kirsty's mentioned yes, that previously. Um, so yesterday, so a really interesting example of this is when we're talking about the average wage in Australia, because it's calculated, if it's calculated using the median, Me median. median it's, that's the one where you just pick the one in the middle. Yep. yep. It's about 45 to 50,000. If you use it, the mean, so you add everything up and then divide it, it's about 86,000. So there is a huge difference. So often, particularly when you're listening to political spin, when they're talking about, so there's been discussion around tax cuts and they'll be talking about, well, the average Australian is earning $83,000 a year. Um, that's, so it really depends on how you work it out. Yeah. Um, so it can have quite a significant difference depending on the numbers you're talking so that's a sort of a practical example of it. Yeah. And of course, from Australian politics, which, as we discovered last week, I used political memes and they were not super impressed. Um, nobody laughed at them apart from me. Um, that's, yes, so I've used an example from Australian politics. Cool. So, so um, that's not what the shoot's about today, but it's a useful thing to come out of it. Um, and, and it's the sort of thing that you can talk to us at the Maths Learning Centre about. The median literally has half above and half below. Um, and that's useful for lots of things where there's a lot of people or individuals that have a lot of high ones or a lot of small, low ones. The mean adds them all up and divides by how many there are. Why would, does anyone have um, a reason why that might be expected to be somewhere in the middle? They all need more caffeine today, I think. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. You're explicitly now allowed to bring coffee to this class. So um, when you add them all up, you're collecting together everybody's score, so everybody's heights, and you're saying this is the total amount of height we've got for everybody. And when you divide by how many there are, you're spreading that across everybody. That's what division does. It spreads things out. And so what you're doing is evenly distributing all of the jumping heights across everybody so that everybody has the same, and that's what the mean is. And that's why it's chosen to be representative, because saying, well, if everybody was the same, this is what it would be. Um, and that's why it's chosen to be representative. But the problem is that if somebody has a lot, then that gets distributed among everybody and it sort of bumps that up. Um, cool. So you've chosen your middles um, and you've tried to get the middle. And it's a good way of trying to be representative to choose a middle. And you've each got a middle here. And based on the middles, we've made a decision that the, these groups seem to be in this order based on the middles. Somehow your group, Jessica, seems to be lower jumpers than the others. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It depends on what squeetles are doing. If they were pets, you might not want them to jump so high because then they might escape from their containers. Um, okay, so this is what we have here. Um, I'm going to get, actually Jessica, you can go back to your group. Um, I'm going to get your two groups, please, to come and join you. Could you step onto this side of the line, please? What's your name? Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Okay, Gabrielle's group, could you come and join Gabrielle on this side of the line and line up with where your number is, please? With your jumping height number. Bring a card with you because you're going to need to line up with your jumping height number. And what's your name? Dana. Dana, could your group please join Dana on this side of the line and line up with your right. jumping height. Now, you won't all be able to fit, so you might have to spread out a bit sideways and line up with about where the number is. So, what do you see? One sixty. Yep. So everyone's in the same roughly general area. Yep. It's slightly the members normal distribution. Sorry? Slightly the members uh normal distribution. 
So it's, it's reminiscent of a normal distribution. So it's like clumped in the middle, but not so much on the edges. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yep. And I notice as well, could the representatives please put your hands straight up high? That's where you are. One, even though the two representatives, um, the means, the averages were one above the other, uh, it turns out that the groups are really not that different from each other. They're roughly at the same spot. Um, but, I mean, generally yours is a little bit on, the clump is a bit lower than the clump is here. So the groups in general, one is a little lower than the other, but we can't really say that about any one individual. One group is higher than the other, but individuals can be higher or lower than the ones in the other groups. Go back to your tables, please. We're still being in the big group for the moment. So the point of that is that averages do in fact help to compare numbers between groups. We could say that in some general way that one group was higher than the other. Um, and the further apart those averages were, the more, can, more useful that information is. But averages don't necessarily represent individuals. Just because one group was higher than the other doesn't mean that every person in one group was higher than every person in the other group. So that's two pieces of information you need to keep in mind when you're interpreting averages. Averages tend to be, um, t they actually are useful for comparing groups. If you had the average wage in Australia and you compared it to the average wage in New Zealand, it would tell you something about Australia and New Zealand in general, but it won't tell you anything about any one Australian or any one New Zealander. Um, and so you need to keep both of those things in mind. Don't ignore all averages because they don't represent individuals. But on the other hand, don't believe all what, what people spin about averages because people try and make it about individuals when they talk. Okay. So next thing, could you please choose one squeetle from, about, from your big group who best represents the whole group's body pattern? Um, and please send your representative to the front. What have you got? That's yours, just to make it bigger for people to see. What are you? Okay, that's yours so everyone can see what it is from a distance. You made a choice. You're very brave. Lots of other people have just chosen the same person who they got chose the first time. All right, which one were you? Stripes. Stripes. That's so everyone can see what you are. Come out here. Okay. Could you hold it just down? I'm just going to get you to put it down. There you go. Hold it down so it's on the camera. Beautiful. So this is what we have. We have one group that's chosen stripes, one group that's chosen stripes, and another group that's chosen spots. Could you tell me how you were chosen? We all put a uh, little vote to see who had what our majority was. Yep. And so did everyone choose it based on the majority? Yeah. Cool. Um, so how many people in your group are spots? Uh, four, four. Four? Four out of twelve-ish? Yeah. Okay. What about your group? We had five spots. Out. Actually, do you know what? Could the people who have spots please stand up? Yep, for every group. Okay, so in your group, um, you had mostly stripes. Yeah. And in your group, you had mostly spots. And in your group, it's roughly even. Okay, so but by you choosing stripes, you've left out a lot of people um, if you're going to be the representative of this group. And actually, even you who've chosen stripes, and you've only got four spotted people, uh, you still left all the spotted people out. How do you think spotted people feel about that? Spotted in this group? How else would we have done it? How else would you, we have done it? That's a good question. We'll cover that. <laughs> but I do, want, I do want to say that if you always choose your representative from the majority, you will systematically ignore people in the minority. There are only 3% people in Australia who... You can sit down. There are only 3% of people in Australia who are of Aboriginal heritage and they are systematically ignored because they're not in the majority. 
So choosing based on the majority is dangerous. So we need a different way, and the different way, you can go back, um, the different way, I didn't just choose someone who was in the majority, I didn't say the majority is spots, I actually had the number of each in each group. And so when you see information about categories and you say, well, it's majority this, then that's not nearly as useful information of saying exactly what percentage is in that category. And that's why we have percentages. Thank you for asking the question of what would you do instead. What you would do instead is choose percentages as your way of reporting about categories instead of um, choosing a representative category because there's no such thing as a representative category. That's why we have percentages. And that's why if people are talking about majority categories, you want to say, actually, could you tell me what percentage of people are in that majority? I want to know. Okay. So this is what we've seen so far. You have to know what a number measures or counts for it to be meaningful. Numbers are only meaningful by comparison. We have to know what they usually are. You know, to know how big they are. Averages help to compare numbers between groups, but they don't necessarily represent individuals. And percentages help to compare groups in terms of more or less in a category. And those last two um, are ways that numbers are used to compare things. Um, and so they're ways of trying to get a handle on what groups are doing in general without thinking necessarily about individuals. But the percentages are a way of keeping the individuals in view when we're thinking about categories. Okay, so... These are all part of one big idea, and the one big idea is it's the story is that's what makes numbers meaningful. Numbers don't mean anything unless um, they have a story to go with them. The one exception is in pure mathematics where you study number theory, um, but those numbers are only meaningful inside themselves, and we don't use them for other stuff. But numbers everywhere else in the world are only meaningful because of the story they're in. And, and arts discipline, like history or politics or marketing, is all about stories. It's all about figuring out who's in the story, how are they related, what are the ideas, how do they fit together. And those are the same things that help make sense of number. So number is not better or worse than those things, it is just part of the story. And you have those skills already. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply those skills to a situation where numbers are reported. I've talked about that in terms of a, a formal report. But as I said, I'm going to do things that are pretty frivolous. I'm going to pick something that you've all had experience with at some point in your life, which is a word problem from school. Which I've made disappear because I have a particular process I'm going to use. So when you look at a word problem at school, you've all seen them before. Some, most of them are pretty stupid. This one is no exception. Um, but we can learn from a process that makes sense of a word problem in school to help make sense of other things as well. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to use a process called the three reads because we're going to read it three times and each time we're going to look for a different information. So the first read is going to be the story. So the beginning of the story is this, squeetles are the latest pet craze. What, an online poll asked people to choose which of striped or spotted squeetles were cuter. I'm going to get you to talk for about 20 seconds among your group about that and then ask for some responses. Go. So that's, that's, that's quite enough. I've heard some things already that I would like people to share. So don't, don't be afraid. So, some thoughts. Okay, so people's opinions of what is cute um, are different, and so that is going to affect how you interpret the results. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Cool. Um, and actually, we're, this doesn't even ask whether they think they're, they're straight up cute or not cute. 
at all. It just says, are they cuter or not cuter? So we haven't even discussed that at all. What about someone from here to have a comment? Um, the first part doesn't actually have anything to do with answering the question. So the first part, squiggles are the latest pet craze, doesn't have anything to do with answering the question? The whole section has nothing to do. I actually argue that that is false. Because without this information, we are not going to be able to interpret what this story is about. And the numbers that come up are going to be meaningless without it. However, it may not be important to do the calculation you're asked to do, but we are actually going to need this information to do the calculation we're going to do. But you don't know what the calculation is yet, so we can't... You, I know that, but you don't. Okay? Someone over here. We misunderstood the question and just kind of discussed which one was cuter. Which one was cuter? Well, what did you decide? Um, I think, like, the striped one, because it's like a bean stripe. So it's like I said Okay, so that's actually not misunderstanding the question at all. So it, if you wanted to interpret this, if this was like uh, something you saw on, on, on the, the internet going past, you would decide for yourself what you thought was cuter. <coughs> and you would interpret the results based on your decision. And you've already done a little survey just among your people there and noticed that people like different kinds of squeakles. Okay, and so that's important to think about what you think this means for you before you go move on. And also think about, like, with, and this is like context, so when you were saying about who, it depends on what you think is cuter, where is this poll? Who, it just says an online poll. <laughs> um, as so often happens on, has anyone noticed that with the stupid sunrise polls they run, you know, that are usually asking a question that, that is... Are you the sort of person who would answer a sunrise poll? 100% <gasps> of people said yes. Sorry. And, <laughs> and you do, you find often with those polls, so things like should, should new start be raised or usually right. things with a lot of political... I'm going to stop you if that's okay, Kirsty, because uh, I have to go to the next shoot soon. <laughs> so, so um, and all of that is important stuff. And it's important to keep in mind, um, and it might mean that, that it changes what your interpretation of the results are later, if this was a real situation. But I do have one more question before we move on. Who would like to know this information, do you think? A pet store? A pet store? Maybe a pet store would like to know which um, people thought they were cuter, um, so that they could either put more effort into making them think that the other one is cuter, or stock more of them, maybe? Yep? general public who are looking to buy them, and why would they want to know? So they, are, like, have the one that's they have the one that's more popular so that nobody shames them if they've got the wrong one. Okay, cool. <laughs> so here's our next bit of the story. From some number of responses, some percentage said that spotted squiddles were cuter. And the reason I've covered up those numbers is that they're not actually part of the story. I mean, they are part of the story. But I'm just looking at the general story. Their details we're going to look at later. Before we look at those numbers, we have to decide what we're going to do with them when they come. Because if we decide what we're going to do with them after looking at them, that will sway our choice. So we're going to decide what do we think is a number of responses that we think is useful for those purposes we discussed um, of finding out about squeetal cuteness. Sorry? 100. OK. That's a not, a not a bad number. Um, would you think 100 is big or small, do you think, in this situation? Or what situations that are here might, where it might be big or small? Yep. Depends on the sample size. So like the, the size of the group you're trying to look for. So uh, the population size is what statisticians call that. Uh, and yes, it would be nice to know. I mean, if you're looking at all, all children in Australia, maybe, that's millions of people. 100 might not be representative of that. So what would be a number that you would think would be useless? Yep. Ten. Ten's not too good. Why is that? Not many. Just within a, just within a small community, like within, within a particular one school, maybe. Okay. But even that, ten, you could just accidentally pick people who are all the same. Yep. Responses, uh, is not enough. 0.9 tenths uh, of those responses, then it's a good number. 
Okay, are you talking about this here? Oh, so use a fraction. So you're saying, well, maybe if you had a school with 300 people, you're hoping to get maybe at least 30. Yes, but if you just look at how large is the whole group, we use a fraction, we can overcome Okay. But there are some numbers that if they were very small, we'd still think that they're not good no matter what. Obviously, if you only ask two people, then it wouldn't mean anything. Okay, what about this percentage? What percentage do you think would be um, useful to know about? Significant. What's significant mean? You've just said something that matters. Uh, what would be useful would be something that's useful. Yeah. Right. Great. Thank you. Like, in a context... So if you wanted to not be shamed for choosing the wrong squeetle, at what point would you commit to a particular kind of squeetle, do you think? 70? 80? 80%? Yeah. Anything over 80? So anything close to 50%, you'd go, oh, there's enough people who agree with me. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we've got some ideas about how we're going to interpret the numbers when they come. Let's see what they actually are. They're the details. That's read number two is to look at the details. So we got 250 responses. That's over the 100 that we said earlier. That's not too bad then. It's not in the zone of like 10, so it's better than that. But again, as people have said, we don't really know how big the population is, so this might not be representative. But assuming that it is, 250 is not too bad. Um, that's all right. And the 60% said that spotted squiddles were cuter, so that based on what people said, not enough for me to commit to one or the other and feel embarrassed about it. Um, and maybe as a breeder that would say, all oh, right, I should probably still have both. So th this section section was so much quicker having thought about all the rest. Okay, but supposing this really is a math problem, so going back to what you said earlier, supposing this really is a math problem, what could I actually figure out? Uh, how many people... Sorry? How many people said out of the 250 said spotted? Okay, so how many people said spotted squeedles? So, how many people is it? You don't have to say. 150? How did you get that answer? Well, 10 25, times that by 2, then times that by 3. Ah, so times 2 would be 20%, and that's 50, and then times 3 would, times that by 3 would be 60%, yeah. which would be 150. Nice, I like it. Um, some other methods that people have done in the tutorials this week um, are to go, well, 50% would be half, which would be 125, and then 10% is 25, and so you add them together to get the 60% to get the 150. And that's another way of doing it. And other people have gone, well, I'm just going to go the 250 times 0 0.6, because 0 0.6 is the fraction that 60% that is. And all of them are valid ways of going about this, and they all show various different understandings of how numbers work, and I think they're all awesome. And so the moral of that is if you come to the Mass Learning Centre with calculations, I'm not going to shame you if you do it another way. Okay? Um, they're all useful, and they're all re reasonable ways of thinking about number. So we've got 150 said that spotted squiddles are cuter. What else could we figure out? You said, or oh, yeah, did you have a, a misgiving about that? You could say 40% don't think that. Spotted. The, the 60% don't think that drives one Yeah. Yeah. And why would you want to be a bit hedge your bets and not say striped? Right. And also, we don't know if there was an option to say they're equally cute. Yeah. So we don't actually know that. Okay, and uh, what else could we figure out? That's 100 people. I'm not going to ask you how you did that. I reckon that's pretty straightforward. If there's 150 that said spotted, there should be 100 in the rest. I think that's pretty much everything we could figure out mathematically. I suppose we could write the 60% in a different way and say oh, it's 6 out of 10 if we wanted to do an advertisement. Um, okay, oh, just a second. So the last read is the goal, and the goal said how many people said striped squeedles were cuter, 
and we figured that out. It was 100. But actually, we have a better answer than that. We could say 100 said striped squiddles are cuter, um, but it might not be a full 100 because we don't know if there was a third option in the survey. So by thinking through the story in the details, we actually already figured out the answer to the problem that we were looking for before we even got there. And by the time we got there, the goal made sense. If all we had done is look at the goal first, then we would have been backpedaling to try and figure out the information instead of just knowing the information already and then it was obvious by the time you got there. And that's true of all things, but also it does prevent you from getting swayed towards a certain decision. And so if you read a report that has statistics in them, you can um, just look at the story first and then think about the details before you read the numbers so that you can make your own decision of the conclusion and then you can read the goal that, that they were looking at, the conclusion that they had and decide if it's reasonable. That's a useful way of going about things so that you don't get distracted by numbers because humans are good at believing things that have numbers in them. Um, and it tends to short circuit your critical thinking if the numbers are there. But finally, this is a really useful strategy for attacking, say, an essay question as well. It doesn't have any numbers in it at all. If you just look at the story, like a history essay, if you had um, a time person in a particular time period, you could look at that time period and think about what's going on. You could look at the person and think about their relationship to what's going on. And only then look at the goal that you've been asked to talk about. Then the goal will make sense because you've thought about the things that are involved and in fact you already have a, a basically a plan for your essay by the time you've gotten to read the goal anyway. So it's a useful strategy for essay writing which is what the rest of your tutor is about. Nice segue. Last thing to say, summary, the story is what the makes the numbers meaningful and you have the skills to make sense of numbers because you have the skills to make sense of story. They are the same skills. But if you want to know about the details, um, well, you can't know a terminology unless someone tells you and calculations are specific things. If any of those things come up and you want to know a statistical terminology, they say adjusted for, adjusted for age in a statistics thing, you can come and talk to us about what that means at the Maths Learning Centre. We're on level three of Hub Central, uh, two levels above this, uh, and 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday, um, any time in there, sit down and someone will come up to you and say, did you want to talk about maths? And it could be anything from a percentage to a course with, a ma with, a, with maths in the title and everything in between. You can talk to us about all of those things. Um, Monday is the busiest day because that's the day the first year maths assignments are due and everyone comes on the day it's due. Thank you very much for having me. I've got another shoot to go to. <laughs>